Now let's discuss screening for vascular disease or assessing the success of revascularization. Patients with critical limb ischemia will almost always have a TCPO2 less than 30 millimeters of mercury and often less than 20 millimeters of mercury. However, as we've already mentioned, low pressure values can also have other causes. So how can you know if the low values you see on a patient are due to arterial disease? The best way is to use an oxygen challenge test, which involves having the patient breathe 100% oxygen via a non-rebreathing face mask. This way you can determine whether the low values are due to a reversible oxygen barrier, such as edema, inflammation, or macrovascular disease. In healthy people breathing 100% oxygen at normobaric pressure, TCPO2 values always increase to greater than 100 millimeters of mercury. Such a response to breathing oxygen indicates that significant macrovascular disease is not likely. An increase in TCPO2 when breathing normobaric oxygen that is less than 30 millimeters of mercury is consistent with severe arterial disease. These patients should undergo further vascular assessment if it has not already been performed. If the patient undergoes revascularization and their TCPO2 value breathing normobaric air has then increased to greater than 40 millimeters of mercury after the procedure, they are highly likely to heal. This is true whether the revascularization was done by surgery or endovascular methods. However, the increase in baseline pressure values after revascularization may be delayed, so post-revascularization TCPO2 studies should not be performed until at least three days after the procedure, and preferably more than a week. The reason is that TCPO2 values can continue to increase for as long as 28 days after revascularization.